Hi, I'm Myla Van Hees and this is Grow Your Movement Freedom. Welcome. So have you ever had the experience of going over on your ankle, like twisting it or spraining it or doing something, and then you've been rebuilding it afterwards, but you've, you've never felt like it's completely back to good confidence, stability again afterwards. And you may notice it when you're doing something like wearing an old pair of shoes that you used to like to wear with heels on them, or walking down a trail and the trail is a bit uneven and you're not sure of your footing, or anything like that where you're just noticing your confidence in your ankle is not as clear and that's easier to go over on than it used to be. We're going to take a look at what's going on with that today and how you can help yourself get more stability and more confidence back in your movement. First of all, let's just take a look at the anatomy of the bones of your foot here. So I have my trusty skeleton from my office here. And this joint, this whole region in here, is really densely populated with these little receptors that are inside joints. And they're called proprioceptors, or proprioceptors, depending on who you talk to. And what they do is they tell your body where you are in space and what's happening mechanically in the joint. How fast the movement's going, how much movement's happening, and what's happening there, and whether you're safe. And when you end up going over on your ankle, this all gets kind of stretched out, and then the, um, the whole mechanism of sending information from these little receptors into your spinal cord, and if it needs to, up to the brain and back down again, gets interrupted or gets disrupted. And this needs to be rebuilt in order for your ankle to work the way it's meant to work. So when I was getting ready for this video today, I was looking up some articles on proprioception and I found one great one. And I put the link for it in the blog post down below. You can go look. And this article talks about there being three different levels inside the nervous system that the proprioceptors talk to. And to have effective rehabilitation of a joint after injury, you need to talk to all three of those levels and make sure that the information is wiring through and that you've got clear pathways of information going up and coming back down again. So what this is, is if you don't talk to your nervous system, if you don't come in and actually work with your nervous system to get these parts lined up again, you're more predisposed for injury. So a typical way that people will work with uh, a rehabilitation of an injury is to go strength training, which is fine, but it's only part of the story. And what you really need to do is talk to the nervous system because the nervous system tells the muscles what to do. So the first part of the nervous system we're going to work with is the information going into the spine and right back out. And this is the reflex part. This happens way faster than you think and it happens immediately. This is the writing reflex inside your ankle. So the kinds of things you can do for that are balance exercises in particular. I'm going to show you a couple. So simple balance exercise here. You're gonna stand on both feet and then you're just gonna stand on one foot. Probably start with your better foot. So stand on your better foot and if you need to, hold on to something to get your balance and then work gradually to being able to not hold on. So hold on when you need to. When you're able to, for one or two seconds or for as long as you can, just let go. And get the sensation of balancing there. And then go to your other foot and do the same thing. So then you might find that this foot is a little bit more wobbly, might need to hang on a bit more, and you're gonna gradually work to be able to balance on this foot as well. Then when that becomes easy, you can add a little bit more challenge, like moving your leg, moving up and down a bit, those kinds of things. And then you can start to also mix it up by making the floor or the surface you're standing on a little more squishy, a little bit more unpredictable. So for example, you might step on a more squishy carpet or you could step on foam pieces. These are specific foam pads that you can step on, feels very different. And you don't have to get fancy about finding something less stable to stand on. You can find cushy carpet or you can find a piece of foam that's around the house. You know, any kind of hard foam you can stand on, like the, the stuff some people put down in garages just to have a foam cushion under your feet. Or you can go to the gym. You might find that some gyms have got the wobble board, so you can stand on a wobble board. Or they have those BOSU balls. They're the half dome ball with a flat bottom, and you can stand on either the round surface or the bottom surface. And that's great for giving your foot and your ankle some additional challenge, more than what it's used to, so it learns more. 
And then to work with the brainstem part of the brain here, this is the place that brings lots of information together to find out whether something feels safe and reasonable in the world. And it's bringing information in from your foot and from your eyes and from the world around you and putting it all together and deciding, am I in danger or am I fine? This part of your brain also works with visual information. And if you notice that you're always looking at the ground, that you only feel confident to step on different surfaces when you're looking at the ground, when you're walking down the trail, you always have to look at where you're going, you're locked in too heavily to visual information to give you your safety. And you wanna retrain your body to be able to listen to the receptors and feel safety instead of see safety. Because you wanna be able to look around and still feel like you can move safely and well. So the way to do this is do the same balance exercises, but start to do them for a couple of seconds with your eyes closed. And you may feel you need to hold onto the wall a bit more, um, that you may do it for a shorter period of time, and you do it only for the period of time that it feels safe and reasonable in your body to do it. And gradually that will grow. And then the third kind of training of your nervous system goes into the, the thinking part, the conscious thinking of your brain. And this is where you can work with range of motion while you're watching what's going on. So when my foot was injured, I might have felt that I could do about this much movement. But now that it's not injured anymore, I can start to check out if it can do more. Can it push out? Can it come in? Can it wiggle a little side to side? What feels reasonable and safe? You want to do it within the range of what is comfortable, reasonable, and safe. Because that's where your body's open to learning. The really key thing is that if you want to get good function back in a joint that's been stretched out or damaged like this, you need to work with the nervous system. You need to do more than working just at the joint and the muscles around the joint. And the more you work with all the different levels in the nervous system, the more you really open up a capacity to respond to the world really well again. And I specialize in helping you discover this kind of intelligence in your own body, how your own body loves to learn this and can really notice what you need to notice in order to learn quickly and learn well. And this means that you can actually work with your nervous system rather than feeling like you're working against it or having no clue actually how to work with the nervous system and not sure whether you're working with it or against it. If you'd like to work with me or you'd like more information, my website information and email address is right below. Get in touch. I'd love to talk with you some more. And meanwhile, you can go out there and explore and gently and carefully and safely check out how to give your joint more experiences, more variety that speaks to all the different parts of your nervous system so that you can really learn to hook up the sensory information that's available in your ankle with the places in your body that can do something with it. So those pathways become clear again and you can get good, reliable, stable function in your joint once more. Hope you have fun with this. Happy exploring and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.